There are typically three types of Excel assessment tests, basic, intermediate, and advanced. I'm about to show you top 25 intermediate Excel interview and assessment test questions with answers, demos, and explanation. I will also share with you some tips, tricks, and hacks on how to best prepare and pass Excel test. These questions are in no particular order, so make sure to watch the entire video from the beginning to end to test your Excel knowledge and get ready for the test. Knowing answers to these questions helped a lot of people and I'm pretty sure it will help you as well. Take a moment and click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen and make sure to like, share, comment and ask me any questions. I'm happy to answer every question I receive and now let's go ahead and get started. Very frequently, you might be asked how to solve specific problem during Excel assessment test. For example, in this question, you will be asked how to calculate total units sold by Jason. And you present it with the table down below, which shows months, salesperson, and number of units sold information. One of the salespeople here is Jason, uh, but there are also other salespeople. And the question is, what would you use? How can you find out total numbers of units sold for Jason? And the presented choices is multi-sum, sum if function, if sum function, or sum formula. Which one would you use? Typically in Excel, when you have no conditions, you can just use sum function and calculate total of sum of values. In our case, we do have one condition as we need to calculate units sold for JSON. And for that, we would need to use sum if function. This is how sum if function will look like to calculate the required values. We have a range of B2 through B11, which is the names of salespeople, and we are finding a values for JSON, which is the value of A15. And then we're getting the sum of values in the column C with the range of values C2 through C12. So when we hit enter to complete the calculation, uh, for JSON, 361 units have been sold. So the correct value for this question is value B, sum if function, because sum if function used to calculate sum of values when you need to calculate sum with one criteria condition. And this is the syntax of the formula that you can use. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up to tell us that you need more content like this. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Very often, you might be asked the question on how to perform specific function in Excel. For example, in this question, which formula you would use to remove a percentage sign and convert it into space? In, in the example given, you see that in column A, there are values that have percentage sign in between the words. And in column B, the values already replaced percentage sign with the space sign. And the choices presented are replace, remove, find and replace function, and substitute function. So which one would you choose? The correct answer is to use substitute function. And the syntax would be substitute, then you reference the uh, cell A1, and then you're saying that you're substituting percentage sign with the space. The easiest way to replicate the values from uh, cell B2 would be to drag the values down, or you can also use copy uh, by clicking the copy button, then selecting the area for which you would like to replicate the value and click and paste button. So the correct answer here is D, substitute function, because this function replaces any unwanted word with the word that you want. The tricky part of this question and that there is a also option that looks very, very valid, for example, find and replace function. But find and replace is the functionality in Excel. There's no such function as find and replace. So you need to be careful and read the entire answer and make sure you're not making the mistake. The only function that exists is substitute that can make this uh, substitution of percentage sign with the space. Let's look at the question, which Excel date format would you use to display date January 1st, 2020 as January-20? There are four choices presented, month-yy, mmmm-yy, three m's and dash yy, and then month-short year. To answer this question correctly, it requires your knowledge of custom Excel date formats. Custom formats located under the Home tab in the Number section. If you click Number in this expansion button here on the Number section, you see different choices. This is not a default format of what we are looking to change it to. 
as if you scroll down, you do not see it on the list. To create this format, we need to go to the custom format sections and look at the possible options. Obviously, if you have access to Excel during the test, you can just go and try any one of these formats. But there is a logic to the custom date formats in Excel. For example, you do not see the full words like month or year or short year here on the list. You only see specific letters representing the months. For example, if we pick three M's dash YY, it will present months as the three letter months. In our case, January dash 20, JAN dash 20. Let me show you one cool trick right here in the format cells dialog box. You do not even have to leave the dialog box to see how the final format date is going to look like. When I choose the different custom format, or if I type the format, it shows it right in the sample sections. You see, as I'm switching in between sections, it changes how sample is going to look like. And you can try an experiment, for example, by adding number of letters M in your custom format. So the correct answer to this question is 4 amps dash YY. All other choices are designed to trick you. If we go back to the question, the correct answer is B, 4 amps dash YY. All other choices are designed to trick you to believe that you might be looking at the right answer, but they are not valid options in Excel or incorrect for the particular question. Very often, as part of Excel assessment test, you are tested on your knowledge of key features and functionality. Let's look at the one of the questions you might get. You use, and then you need to fill in the blank, to automate data analysis and organize the answers returned by Excel. And you have four choices. Extract data range, extract, formula, and data table. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? As you might have figured, the correct answer to this question is D, data table. Data table can be created from either existing data set or by importing the new data right into Excel table. Despite availability of a lot of different languages and tools specifically designed for data analysis, Excel still remains the key in the data analysis for the small data sets, and Excel table is essential part of it. Hopefully you've got the answer to this question correctly. Let's look at the typical Excel assessment test that tests your knowledge of Excel security. You can add, and then you need to fill in the blank and select the choice when you want to keep others from changing your worksheet. There are four choices, data range encryption, password protection, protected file attribute, and then trust center option. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? To limit what others can do with your worksheet, you need to password protect the worksheet. To do that, you navigate to review tab and then select Protect Sheet option. There are different security options that you can choose when protecting your worksheet, allowing users to do specific functions and disabling them from doing others. You need to select the right options that you would like to allow for editing and then enter the password twice to confirm the selection. So the correct choice here is choice B. You can password protect Microsoft Excel file to prevent unauthorized people from opening or editing them you still will be able to open or edit it if you know the password. All other choices in this question are designed to trick you. Hopefully you've got it right. I'd like to share with you some tips, tricks, and hacks how to get ready for Excel assessment test. One of the best ways to get prepared is to use mock and practice assessment tests. This helps you get better knowledge of the tool and better understanding how to pass the test. I also recommend that you read questions carefully, ideally more than once if you have enough time. Also you should consider answer easy questions first if you have a choice of going back and forth. This allows you to get your answers in for the easy questions and then process more complicated questions with more time and knowledge and better understanding to give you more chances to get them right. I also recommend validating the answers to the questions with more than one method. For example, if you have formulas to validate the question and then you can use pivot tables to validate the answers. And last but not least is watch training videos from this channel, from other channels, from as many sources as you can to get prepared. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Here's another question you might get as part of Excel assessment test. A, and then you need to fill in the blank, function can be used to calculate the sum of subset of data. And there are four choices, count, total, subtotal, and group. Which one do you think is the right answer? 
subtotal function in Excel has a different way of organizing and calculating the values. For example, in this particular case, you have a choice of doing something within the range of C7 to C9. A 9 value represents specific action that you take in within this range. There are 11 different subfunctions subtotal currently supports. And value 9 represents the sum, which is what we're looking for. So when we will insert the subtotal function in the cell D10, it will calculate subtotal for the range of D7 through D9, and it would be a sum of values based on the number 9, which represents the sum. As you might have figured out by now, the correct answer to this question is C, subtotal, because subtotal allows you to group and summarize your data using sum, count, average, minimum, max, and other functions. And in this case, we're looking for the sum function. Hopefully you've got it right. Here is the typical questions that aims to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel security. You can change the value and then you need to fill in the blank of cells at any time. And there are four choices, unprotected, formatted, unlocked, and hidden. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? In Microsoft Excel, you have different option of changing the security of the cell by navigating to Format Cells option. One of the ways to navigate is by using the right mouse click. When you click on the menu, you see different options, and one of them is Protection tab. You can have cell being locked or hidden, but these options do not take any effect unless you actually protect the Excel spreadsheet using the Protect Sheet button. To Protect Sheet, you navigate to the Review tab and click on the Protect Sheet, where you select a lot of different options. So to answer the question, the cells that you can edit at any point of time are called unprotected. As you might have figured by now, the correct choice is choice A, which is unprotected, because protecting the cells that contain formula prevents them from being changed and can help you avoid future errors. And as we discussed, locking the cell is the first step, and you must perform additional operations to protect the workbook, such as setting the password. All choices besides choice A are incorrect and designed to trick you. Hopefully you've got it right. Let's take a look at the question, which tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel tables. The query technique that uses the column heading arrows is called, and then you need to fill in the blank. It is automatically enabled when you first create Excel table. And there are four choices. Extract range, auto filter, sorting, and then rules manager. Which one would you choose? To convert data into Excel table, you need to select the range you're trying to convert, and then you have multiple choices. One of them is click on the insert and then click table, or as you can see, there's a shortcut, control T, which will do the same thing. If you click on the table, it prompts you to confirm the range that you're trying to convert, and you need to check the box my table has headers, which in our case it does. When you click OK, you see that Excel table was created, and by default, you have auto filter option. This is the same option that's available if you add auto filter to a range. You have a lot of different choices in this auto filtering option. You can sort, sort by color, and you can select specific values if you would like to manually handpick the selection. So as you might have figured out by now, the correct answer to this question is auto filter, which is the choice B. Because you can use the auto filter feature to find show or hide values in one or more columns of data and it's automatically added every time you create Excel tables. Hopefully you've got it right. Why you might consider subscribing to this channel? This is one of the fastest way to learn and get prepared for Excel assessment test. Skills you learn are helpful today and in the future. You get answers to your questions. You have opportunity to help other people. And you have experienced professionals who already subscribed to this channel and ready to help you with any answers that you need. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Here is the question that tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel tools and functionalities. Which tool can combine last names, initials, and first names in column D if a worksheet column A contains employee last name, column B contains employee's middle name, and then column C contains employee's first names? And you have four choices, columns to text, concatenation, autofill, and flash fill. Which one would you choose? To combine the value from multiple columns into one cell, 
you need to use Excel feature called concatenation. There is a concatenate function, and if you concatenate values from A3, B3, and C3, it combines the result. Now you can just expand this formula into other cells, and it will replicate and will come up with the full name value. Because of this, the correct answer to this question is B, concatenation. Concatenation in Microsoft Excel is the process of joining two or more values together, and this method is often used to combine a few pieces of text that resides in a different cells. Technically, these are called text strings or simply strings. And when you concatenate cells in Excel, you combine only the context of those cells. Here is the question that tests your knowledge of Excel's features and functionality. When cell A1 value is 7, its background displays a green color. Changing the value to 8 changes the background color to blue. What type of formatting applied to the cell A1? And there are four choices. Tabular formatting, cell style formatting, conditional formatting, and value formatting. What do you think is the right choice? Which one would you choose? This is how this functionality looks in Excel. If you change the value of the cell from 7 to 8, you see that the background color changes as well. And this functionality is called conditional formatting. There are different rules that you can apply as part of conditional formatting. You can highlight cell based on specific rules of greater, less than, between, equal to, and uh, there are a lot of other conditions here as well. And then you can do a bottom top rules. You can have data bars, color scales, icon sets, and create your own rules in Microsoft Excel. As you might have figured out by now, the correct answer is C, which is conditional format, because it allows you to automatically apply formatting, such as colors, icons, and data bars, to one or more cells based on the cell value. And if value is changing, the application of conditional formatting changes as well. A lot of people ask, how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question that you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Let's look at the question that tests your knowledge of formatting in Microsoft Excel, which you might get as part of Excel interview and assessment test. If column C is displaying a hash because the column is too narrow, how can we fix column C to display the entire set of data. Then you see an image where in column C you have a lot of hashtags. And there are four choices offered. A. Double click column C. B. Right click column C. Select format cell and then select best fit. Choice C. Double click the vertical boundary between columns C and D. And then choice D. Right click column C and select best fit. Which one would you choose? Pound sign in the column is an indication that data does not fit properly. And the best way to fix it is to click on the line that separates the column. Once you double click, it expands the column to the appropriate size where you can see all the data. And as you have figured out by now, the correct answer to this is choice C. Double click the vertical boundary between column C and D. What's interesting is that the hashtag error or a string of hash or pound signs is not technically an error but it looks very much the same. This is just an indication that the column width is too narrow to display the value as it's currently being formatted. One of the ways to fix it is to drag the column separator in between the columns, but because this choice wasn't available, the easiest way to do it is also by double-clicking it. So can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please post in the comments of this video to share with others. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Keyboard shortcut questions very frequently presented as part of Excel assessment test. Let's look at one of those questions. Which keyboard shortcut would you use to wrap the text and start a new line when inside the cell? And then there are four choices presented with the different keyboard shortcuts. Alt plus Enter, Control plus Enter, Alt plus N, and Alt plus W. Which one would you choose? When you are inside the cell and you need to continue the text on the new line, you use Alt-Enter shortcut. When I press Alt-Enter, you see that the first name that follows the last name started with the new line. So the correct answer to this question is choice A, Alt plus Enter. 
very similar functionality can be accomplished using the wrap text feature of Microsoft Excel. What are the smartest ways to get prepared for Excel test? One of the things you can do is download the latest version of Excel and Explore. I would consider Office 365 subscription. You get free trial and you can use it for up to 30 days and this is enough time for you to get prepared. You can also use outlines from test providers on their website. For example, Indeed.com has a lot of sample questions that they provide and the answers as well. You can also try LinkedIn Excel assessment test. One of the best ways to get ready is download and read Excel books and eBooks. And last but not least is consider subscribing to this channel. I post new videos periodically and you get answers to the latest questions that are being asked in the tests today. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Here is the tricky question to test your knowledge of Excel keyboard shortcuts, which is very frequently used as part of Excel assessment test. Which keyboard shortcut would you use to enter a current date in a cell? And you have four choices, Alt plus D, Control plus semicolon, Control plus seven, and Control plus D. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? To insert current date into Excel sheet, you need to put your cursor on the cell and then press Control and semicolon. This combination inserts current date into the cell. Keep in mind that the value that we've inserted remains static, and if I open the same worksheet tomorrow, the date is going to be yesterday's date, because Microsoft Excel shows the date at the time when it was inserted. So the correct answer to this question is choice B, control plus semicolon. Hopefully you've got it right. Let's look at the question to test your knowledge of Excel data types and their formatting options. Which of the following will be displayed when you enter 0.5 in a cell that is formatted as a percent? And then you have four choices, 5%, 50%, 0.05%, and 0.5%. Which one would you choose? When you have a value in a cell and then convert this value into percentage, Excel is treating the value as part of the whole. For example, 0.5 is 50% of 1, which is the half of 1, which represents 50%. So when you convert this value into percentage, by clicking and selecting the percentage data type, it will show that the value is 50%. So the correct choice here is choice B, 50%. Keep in mind that to convert the values, you can use a lot of different options, including keyboard shortcut, control, shift, and then percentage. Hopefully you've got this question correctly. Here is the typical question which tests your knowledge of Excel ribbon commands. Which Excel ribbon commands you can use to achieve same results? When you select cell A1, hover the pointer over the cell border and drag the cell to a new location. You are presented with the screen and in cell 1 there is a text value of name and there are four choices, cut and format, copy as picture, cut and paste, copy and paste. Which one would you choose? You can drag the value in Excel cell by selecting the cell and changing the cursor to the arrows. And then when you drag this, it will move the value along with this. And moving the value is an equivalent of cut and paste command. You can use cut and paste or you can use keyboard shortcuts for cut and paste. Let me undo this real quick and we will use undo functionality on the quick bar. And then to use cut and paste format, we can do cut here right on the ribbon and then select the new location for the cell, and then we can click Paste. Or we can use keyboard shortcuts after I undo it again. And for keyboard shortcuts, I'll press Control X, and then move the cursor to a new location, and then press Control V. So the correct answer here is C, cut and paste. Dragging the value of the cell is very similar to cut and paste functionality available in Microsoft Excel. In keyboard shortcuts for this, for cut, it's Control X, and for paste, it's Control V. Not so long ago, Excel assessment test questions always had VLOOKUP functions in them. Since additional functionality was added into Microsoft Excel, now you are tested for your knowledge of index and match functions, which is a more sophisticated equivalent of VLOOKUP. For example, how to display the product ID for product name water cooler in cell E2. And you present it with the screen where you can see different product IDs, different product names and product prices. 
and you have product name of water cooler, and then you have column F, where the final value should be added. And you have four different choices. You have nested match inside match, you have nested index inside match, then you have nested index inside index function, and then you have nested match inside index function. So which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? And as you might have figured out by now, the correct answer is the match inside the index function. First, you need to identify where water cooler value is located in the range B2 to B7. And then you take this value and through the index function, you identify the product ID for that particular selection. So when we hit enter for this function, the final answer and final product ID will be three, which matches the water cooler. So the correct answer here is D and you have match function inside of nested index function. And one of the big advantage of index and match pair functions is that the VLOOKUP value can be in any column of the array, unlike the VLOOKUP function in which lookup value must be in the first column. A lot of times you might be tested on your knowledge of Excel formatting features. This is one of the samples questions you might get. In the following worksheet, you want to copy the format of cell A2 into the cells C2 through F2. Which methods would you use to achieve this the most efficiently? In the four different choices presented here in the Excel screen, you can use Format Painter, choice A, you can use Insert, B, you can use Merge and Center, which is C, and then you can use Cell Styles, which is D. Which option would you choose? As you're probably well aware, to copy formatting in Microsoft Excel, you use Format Painter. For example, cell A1 has a lot of different formatting options, and to copy the format of cell A1 to the range of C2 through E2, this is what you need to do. You need to select the cell, click Format Painter, and then apply this to a range of C2 through E2. And as you probably figured out by now, the correct answer is A, Format Painter. And Format Painter is one of the most helpful and underused features of Microsoft Excel. It works by copying a formatting of one cell and applying it to other cells. And format attributes that being copied, we have different general percentage currency, all these numeric types of options that's available in Excel. Also, as part of formatting process, font characteristics are being copied, such as bold, italic, and underline, and others. You copy field color, text alignments, cell borders, and a lot of other things. A lot of times during Excel assessment test, you will be tested on your knowledge of Excel keyboard shortcuts. In this particular question, you're being asked what is the keyboard shortcut of the auto sum in Excel, and you present it with the four different choices. So there are four different shortcuts. The first one is Alt equal, Alt S, Alt D, and then Alt A. What do you think is the right answer? One thing to keep in mind here is that there are only two keyboard keys that you need to press. For example, plus sign is not plus sign that you press on the keyboard. Plus sign just indicates that there are two keys, Alt and the, another key, for example, equal sign. Alt and another key, for example, capital S. So with that in mind, what do you think is the right answer? There are multiple ways to trigger auto sum function in Excel. For example, if you have a set of values, and typically it's in numerical values, like in the column B in this case, you can trigger auto sum function by just clicking on the auto sum, and you see that automatically on the home tab, auto sum in editing section, it shows you the shortcut. So for example, if you know where the sum function is, you can quickly find what the shortcut is. And in this case, the answer is Alt plus equal sign. And once you trigger this shortcut, it highlights the area, and once you click Enter, it inserts the sum of the values. To learn more about shortcuts used in Excel assessment test, I recommend my PDF ebook that you can download from my website. In this book, I have the whole section dedicated to keyboard shortcuts. You can see that the section here covers Excel shortcuts, frequently used shortcuts, formatting, function key shortcuts, navigational shortcuts, column and row shortcuts, and then control shortcuts. All of these shortcuts have been selected based on the questions we see on the tests. And in addition to shortcuts, you will also find top 50 Excel interview questions and Excel assessment test questions used during Excel assessment test to get you ready and get you hired uh, for your new employment. As you probably figured out by now, the correct answer to the question is A, old plus equal sign. And once you press the shortcut after selecting all the values, you will get auto sum function triggered, and then you just need to hit enter to execute it. 
Very frequently, you are being tested on your knowledge of Excel formulas. And this is one of those questions, where you will be asked which formula is used to retrieve first three characters in a cell. And you are given four different choices, left, left char, get, and extract. So what does it mean, first three characters in a cell? It means that it's probably going to be on the left side. So for a sample of apple, you see on the column C, where the values are highlighted, first three characters would represent APP. For oranges, it would be ORA. So what do you think is the right choice here? As you're probably well aware, to get the first three characters on the left side, you would want to use the left formula. And when you type left and then in parentheses the cell value and then number of characters you'd like to retrieve on the left-hand side, it actually gets all these characters and puts them in a different cell. So for example, in this case, for Apple, we'll get first three characters, APP. And we can replicate this formula by dragging the sign here at the bottom uh, right corner, and then it will replicate the formula for oranges and cherries as well. So the correct answer here is A, which is the left A3, and then it shows the number of characters that you're trying to retrieve. Left char is not an existing function. Get and extract also are not an existing functions in Excel. And if you're trying to see if some particular function is an existing function, all you need to do is put the value into the cell and then type equal sign and then start typing. And you see the only function that starts with left is the left function itself. So choice A is the correct answer. A lot of times when you work with the data from another source, you may need to separate the data into the separate columns. For example, here we see a combination of first and last name in column A. But in columns B and C, you see these values as separate values. So how would you do it? Which Excel function would you use? You're presented with the four different choices, text to column, separate, fu separate function, split function, and split to column. Which one would you choose? And the correct answer here is split to column. To access this functionality, you need to select the values and navigate to the data tab. Here you select text to column, and it offers you different choices. For example, it offers it uh, as a delimited text or fixed width. In our case, it's a delimited. And delimitation comes with the space sign that we use to separate the values. Instead of tab, we choose space, which is one of the values. And you see this is how uh, the separation and split will be performed. We click the next button. And here we can assign data types uh, to the data. If we don't do it, then Excel will assign general data type. And then we can click finish. And you see that it automatically replaced the values uh, with col in column A and column B. And now we have first and last name in the separate columns. So the correct answer is answer A, text to column function. This function is used to separate words that have a separator character, for example, space, special character, tab, or any unique word. Keep in mind that even though we call it function, it is not really a function, it's a functionality. And below are instructions on how to use it. Other choices here in the list, separate function, split function, or split to column, they do not exist in Excel. So you kind of have to know what you're dealing with, and that's what the purpose of this question, to test your knowledge on this particular functionality, and if you have used it as part of data conversion. Very often, you might be tested on your knowledge to manipulate Excel strings. This is a simple question in this category. Which formula is used to make first letter in the word uppercase? What we see here on the screen, in column A, all values are lowercase. In column B, the same values represented with only first character uppercase. And there are four choices presented. A, proper, first upper, left up, and uppercase. Which one would you choose? The correct answer here is to use proper function. And this is the syntax. All you need to do is type the function and reference the cell. In this case, it's cell A3, which contains the original value. And you see that the value was converted with the first letter being uppercase and the remaining letters in the word being lowercase. If you need to expand this function, you can use copy and paste or just drag it to represent updated values in all the cells in column B. So the correct answer here is choice A, proper, and then you reference the original value from original cell. A lot of you are interested in asking me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions that you see on Excel interview and assessment test and how you answered them. Please share the questions you recently encountered in the comments section of this video. If you know the answers, please share them as well. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. 
Very often during Excel assessment test, you might be tested on how well you know Excel formatting. One of the questions we see on the screen is in a similar category. How to increase decimals of a value which has percentage sign. And there are choices presented for you in the explanation of what exactly you're looking for to accomplish. For example, you need to go from 76% to 76.25, from 70 after rounding 69.75, and etc. And there are four choices presented. So which one would you choose? You see the values in this example are replicated from cells I3 through I7. So how would you increase percentage sign? You actually use this button, which calls for increase decimal. And once you click it once, it increases decimal by one decimal point. If you click it twice, it adds two decimal points, which exactly mimics the answer. Or instead of selecting one at a time, you can select all of the values and then click it twice to increase decimal points. So the correct answer here is B, which is increase decimal point. And once you see the answer, you need to click increase decimal point value twice after you selected all the range of values to increase decimal points. I'd like to ask you to participate in our daily Excel assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of this channel and give you an opportunity to answer this and try it. And I post the answer in the comments next day. So please make sure to check it out and test your knowledge. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Let's look at the question which Excel formula would increment month to the next and allow display February 20 in the cell A3. Here in the screenshot, we have January-20 in the cell A2, and there are four formulas presented as choices. In choice A, we have A2 plus 1, which makes logical sense. In the choice B, we have more complicated formula using date function. In the choice C, we have month A2 plus 1, and in the choice D, we have date A2 plus 1. So which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? And as you might have figured out by now, the right choice is choice B. We have the complex formula because date in Excel is very complex. You can increment the year by one, month by one, or date by one. And in our case, we're only incrementing month by one. So once we type the formula, we see that the right value shows up here, which would be February 2020. We just need to change the format here. And to change the format, we can use Format Painter. We just need to highlight the current format that we are looking at and apply it to the cell and expand it a little bit so it fits. So the correct answer is B, with this complex date formula where only month is being incremented by one. All other choices are designed to trick you. Let me share with you the best ways to learn and get prepared for Excel assessment test. You need to dedicate uninterrupted chunks of time. And when your attention drifts, make sure you take a break. You can download workbooks and repeat steps in the workbooks to make sure you understand how this exercise has been completed and done. I also recommend that you watch this video from start to finish. A lot of times there are tips and tricks and hacks shared in one part of the video that might be applicable to another part of the video and I don't want you to miss any of it. Make sure you download all the materials offered in the description of this video. And when you're watching, set the playback speed so that it keeps you engaged and gives you time to absorb the content. Here in this video, you have everything you need to get you prepared. Here is the variation of this question, which provides you with the different choices. To create new sheet in Excel, you use Control T keyboard shortcut, click File, New Sheet, Click New Icon on the Quick Access Toolbar, or right mouse click on Existing Sheet and select Insert. Let's use Exclusion to answer this question correctly. Exclusions is one of the methods where you exclude possible choices to come up with the right answer. Control T Keyboard Shortcut is used to create new tables, not new sheets. File New Sheet option doesn't exist in Excel menu. New Icon in the Quick Access Toolbar create new workbook, not a new sheet. So through the method of exclusion, we came to choice D, which is the right mouse click on existing sheet and select insert. To create new sheet in Excel, you right mouse click on the sheet one, click insert and select worksheet and that added a new worksheet into Excel spreadsheet. So the right choice here is choice D, right mouse click on existing sheet and select insert. Other choices are designed to trick you to believe that you might be the right answer, but they're not the valid option in Excel or incorrect for this particular question. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for interview or Excel assessment test, please share this video with them. 
This is going to help them pass and get their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Let's look at the question, how to highlight duplicate values by using conditional formatting. What you see on the screen here is the set of values in two columns, fruit ID and then fruit name. And uh, you see in green some of the values that are duplicates. Um, you see grapes that are duplicates, you see lynchy, you, had, you see date palm as a duplicate, and you need to highlight all of the values. And there are four possible choices. And you have all the choices pretty much the same, but the last part of the selection is different. You have identified duplicates, you have highlight duplicates, matching values, and then you have duplicate values. Seems like a technicality, but these are the types of questions that you get on the test. So what do you think is the right answer? To identify duplicates in Excel, you need to highlight all the values, and then click Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, and then click on the duplicate values. And then here, in this dialog box, you're presented with the choices that you're selecting a duplicates, and this is the color that you choose to highlight the duplicates. For example, to replicate the question that was on the test, you need to select green field with dark green text. Click OK, and you see that all the duplicates have been highlighted. So the correct answer here is D. First, you need to select and then go to Conditional Formatting from the Home tab, and then Highlight Cell Rules and click Duplicate Values and choose your color. Keep in mind that though choices A through C are very similar looking, but they're not the same, and those technicalities are something that you'll be tested on Excel Assessment Test. So how Excel Assessment Test is different during COVID-19? You need to be prepared to take Excel Assessment Test at home. You might be monitored using Canberra or other features that provider has. You also should anticipate questions based on the job position. For example, if you're applying for accountant, you need to better understand what types of work is done by accountant and what types of questions might be asked during the interview. You also need to research and practice before the test. Your ability is being tested is not necessarily your knowledge of Excel, but your ability to answer questions correctly and in a timely manner. I also recommend that you reflect after the test and take notes. After every test that you pass, Look at what worked, what didn't work, and how you can improve. And last but not least, is try to improve your hands-on and Excel skills. To do that, download latest version of Excel, use practice sheets, download eBooks, and do a lot of hands-on exercises to get you ready. Now let's continue and help you to get ready for Excel interview and assessment test. Let's look at the question, which function can be used to remove unwanted space from a cell. And what you see here on the list, you see a column A populated with values, and some of these values have multiple spaces. For example, in between words, uh, there's a series of spaces. And four choices are presented. And you see the text here is uh, not in English. Some of the words are in English. So you have to pick the function that would be working not just in English, but in any other language. And four choices are presented. We have a choice of remove space, Clear function, trim function, delete char function. So what do you think is the right answer? And the correct answer is a trim function. When you start typing in column B and you type trim, you see this uh, help here that comes from Excel. It removes all spaces from a text string except for a single spaces between words. What you need to do, you need to type the trim function and then in parentheses put the cell A2, which would uh, reference the cell in the column A, and then hit enter and you see that it removed all extra spaces. And then what you need to do, you need to just drag it across the area using the drag button, which was available right here in the bottom left corner. And then you see that all extra spaces have been removed. Other choices presented in the test are not valid choices. For example, if you start typing remove, or you need to type clear, or any other choices that's presented in the quiz, you will not find those types of functions in Excel. So this particular question relies on your knowledge and understanding that trim function is available and this is what it's used for. If you have a choice of uh, working and accessing Excel document during the test, you can quickly run a test and eliminate choices A, B, and D from the list because they are not valid choices and these functions don't exist in Excel. And by now you probably figured out that the correct answer is C, which is a trim function, which is used to remove unwanted spaces and I showed you the format of how to use this function. If you would like to take a shortcut and get prepared faster, make sure to check out the description of the video and download available materials. 
please make sure to check out my ebook, Top 50 Excel Interview and Assessment Test Questions. It not only provides you insider view of the testing process, but also gives you top questions and answers, keyboard shortcuts, allows you to learn the best ways to prepare for the test. You can also learn what to do when you arrive for the test, and it gives you tips and tricks and hacks to get ready. Links to available downloads are in the description of this video. Please make sure to check out my PDF ebook, Top 50 Excel Interview and Assessment Test Questions. It helped a lot of people to get hired. Also, consider subscribing to this channel. We have a lot of people helping each other, and here you will get answers to all your questions related to Microsoft Excel Interview and Assessment Test. If you like the content, please share with other people who are looking for the job and will benefit from this. And give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about Excel Assessment Test, would like to share with us what are the recent questions that you're getting during the test, please make sure to leave them in the comments. We have a community of dedicating people helping each other to pass the test. All the best on your Excel interview and assessment test.